Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back to another video. Now today, I wanted to talk about the ViewSonic XG2703-GS, and it's the first ViewSonic monitor I've looked at, and it is their most high-end, as this is a monitor that costs around about £700 at the time of filming, with an RRP of 750 but it comes with a G-Sync IPS 2560x1440 equipped 27-inch panel. So this is definitely quite a spec sheet, and we've seen a lot of monitors like this recently. We've seen the AOC Aegon, we've seen the Acer Predator, and then we've seen the Asus PG279Q. So where does this fit in, and is it worth buying? Well, it all starts with the design, which actually, for a lot of people, is probably going to be what they're after. It's not at all gamery, to be honest, which is something that a gamer-specific focused monitor often is. So it's quite refreshing to see a fairly plain design. If you put this in an office, I don't really think anyone would know that this is a gaming monitor unless they look at its spec sheet. The main downside and the main negative of this is that it maybe looks a little bit plain. Whereas LG and even the AOC Aegon monitors have a little bit more metal in there, and maybe a little bit more of an industrial design, this maybe just looks a little bit bland by comparison. But of course, it's up to you whether you appreciate this or not. And the stand itself has most of the adjustments. You've got height adjust, you can pivot and you can tilt, but for some strange reason you can't swivel the monitor. And I don't really understand why, because even the AOC Aegon that looks like it can't swivel, can swivel, so why this doesn't have swivel is a little bit beyond me. Obviously you can just rotate the entire thing, it's not really a problem, but I don't really get why they couldn't include that. One thing that they did include though was decent cable management. You've got a channel through the middle next to the LED indicator, so overall I do quite like the look of the monitor, but it doesn't necessarily look the most expensive. And moving around to the back of the monitor, it's a fairly similar story. Nothing really to shout out about here. This is one area where the AOC Aegon definitely looks a lot better, but no one's really going to see the back of your monitor, so it doesn't really matter. You will find a visa mount here if you do want to use a different stand. And then you've got all the connections on the underside as well. So the main one you're going to want to use is DisplayPort, and that's going to enable the high resolution, high refresh rate, and the G-Sync tech. But then you've also got a HDMI 1.4 as well for hooking up a Chromecast or whatever else it is you want to plug into this. You've got a headphone jack, and you can also plug in a USB device, up to four. Two of the ports are on the underside, and they are USB 3. And then you've got two on the right-hand side of the monitor, where you've only got USB 2.0. One last thing to note is that on the back of the monitor you've got all the buttons that controls the on-screen menus as well as a neat headphone stand so that if you use headphones you can tuck them out of the way when not in use providing you've got room on the back of your desk which is something I didn't really have much of. And setting this monitor up is actually really simple because this is probably the best monitor that uses one of these AHVA um, IPS style panels out of the box. The colour accuracy and the way it looked really was fantastic and I know there are plenty of people that will buy a monitor, they might change the brightness and contrast but they won't touch anything else. So it's nice to see that ViewSonic have nailed the user experience by having a nice out of the box colour profile that is going to work for most people. But if you do want to change anything around and you want to enable that 165Hz overclockable refresh rate then you're going to need to use the menus. And the good news is that the buttons are physical and they feel great in the hand. The downside is that this is one of the worst menu systems I've used recently in terms of making mistakes. Visually it actually looks really good and it's much better than AOC's system. But the way it works is that you've sort of got to reach around and press the button and then the label is on the front. But I would pretty much every single time I would go to use the menu, I would accidentally press the wrong button and then exit out of it or select the wrong thing. And it's just frustrating. LG seem to have nailed this where you have a four-way selector at the front and you can very it's, it's very difficult for you to make mistakes. You can see exactly what you're doing and using the menu is an, is an ease and is a joy. Uh, but here, unfortunately, not so much. But you won't really need to go into the menu system that often. Now, once you have got this thing set up the way you want it to, you'll start to appreciate just how good the panel is. Now, the finish as well on the display, I have to say, is very, very good. It does pick up reflections. It's not as matte as some of the panels I've used, but it's probably 
Uh, for me, it's about perfect in terms of not having any sort of horrible coating on it that makes the image a little bit fuzzy, but at the same time not being too glossy so that it picks up reflections. It sits nicely in the middle. And in combined with the really wide viewing angles that you get from a IPS panel, and then that rich color vibrancy and color accuracy, it's a joy to use. So it is rated at 100% of the sRGB. I don't have the equipment to test that here, but I was doing a lot of color grading for these videos, and I found this monitor to be, monitor to be really, really good uh, for doing that. So if you want to use this for any sort of serious color critical work, while it definitely won't be the absolute best monitor out there, it is going to be a great choice if you want to also do some gaming on the side because it is a real pleasure to use. But of course this is a gaming monitor and it's all about games. So if you've got an Nvidia card you'll want to enable the G-Sync tech uh, in the desktop. It automatically does that for you these days and then of course overclock the monitor to 165Hz. For some reason, uh, there was one time when I did overclock the monitor, you only need to do it once, but there was one time when I did overclock it, I disconnected my monitor to do some shooting, plugged it back in, and then I found that I was getting some weird corruption appearing on the monitor every five minutes or so, it'd be like a grey line would just appear across the entire screen, and I tried disabling the G-Sync, I tried disabling uh, 165 hertz, couldn't seem to fix it, sort of left it for a few days, went back to 144 hertz, which worked without a flaw, and then re-enabled the tech, and it seems to have been working as good as gold. But aside from that one isolated issue, I really don't have anything bad to say about the gaming experience. Because it's super smooth, it looks fantastic, and realistically, as long as you can power the games at that refresh rate, there's not really anything better on the market today. TN panels do have lower response times, which means you're going to get lower ghosting, but in terms of input lag, it's not really going to be that different, and this is definitely the route I'd recommend people going for if they have a lot of money to spend on a gaming monitor and they want the best. Obviously, you can get an ultra-wide monitor, but those are still limited at 100Hz, and not every single game supports 21x9. So, for my testing, I've been playing an awful lot of Paragon, which is Epic Games MOBA, which I actually really like, by the way. Um, not paid to say that, I just think it's a good game. Um, and playing it on this monitor is actually really fantastic, and it's sheer bliss, to be honest with you. You did get a little bit of stutter that I had to play around with some of the G-Sync or the uh, V-Sync settings to finally fix, but once I had solved that issue, um, yeah, it was a truly fantastic experience, and having a game that requires a lot of Twitch reactions really does benefit from a monitor like this, as long as you pair it with a decent mouse as well. A mouse and monitor are probably the two most important things, other than frames per second. Moving on to Battlefield 1, I was getting an average of around about 95 frames a second, and everything was super smooth. That game is so well optimised that the frame rate graph is sort of like that. So there's no sharp drops, like Paragon for instance, you might suddenly lose 20 frames a second and it'll go back up for no for some strange random reason. Um, but Battlefield 1 doesn't do that, which means that you never notice that your frame rate is gone slightly up or slightly down, and it was very easy to get a, uh, well, very easy to get some good headshots and actually have a very good game. Moving on to a game that maybe doesn't benefit quite so much, but still looks and plays fantastically, is Batman Arkham Knight. The game locks this at 90 frames a second, but realistically with a controller, I don't personally believe there's that much difference between uh, 90 frames a second and then getting on for the 165 um, frames a second, especially with a controller, the difference is not that noticeable. Don't get me wrong, it is noticeable, but it's not as important here. And you can turn on things like ultra low motion blur uh, uh, with the monitor as well, but that means disabling the G-Sync, which for a lot of titles isn't something I find myself doing. So, the gaming experience then is fantastic. From a productivity stand standpoint, it's fantastic. The design is a little bit bland, but there's not really any downsides here, right? Well, unfortunately there is, and that's just plainly price. Now, these monitors are expensive, don't get me wrong, and Picking up a monitor like this is a serious commitment as you're going to want to use this for many years to come and choosing the right one is going to be an important decision for you. The problem I have is that if you want to buy a monitor like this, personally I would buy the Acer Predator XB271HU, not the HUA, that's the TN panel. And the reason for that is that 
You can sometimes find it for as low as 550, 600 pounds. So it's at the lower price bracket of these sorts of monitors. And the build quality is good enough, but it's not as good as something like the Asus PG279Q, which is at the top of the game in terms of build quality. But the Asus is more expensive for a reason. And then the Acer is cheaper for a reason. The ViewSonic is currently retailing for around about £700, 700 to 750 and I can't really understand why anyone would choose this one at its current price point when they could get the ROG Swift, which is also around about £700, because the build quality is better on that monitor, the bezels are better, they're slimmer, and the menu system is better. So I don't really, there's nothing wrong with this monitor. I mean. In terms of performance and gaming performance, they're more or less identical and I think most people, if they're all calibrated the same way, wouldn't be able to distinguish between any of them. So if this monitor, get, monitor gets a little bit cheaper and it hits the £600 mark, then it would be an easy recommendation. But at £700, I would probably myself still buy the Asus PG279Q or if I was trying to save some cash, I'd maybe look at the AOC Aegon or that Acer Predator, which are similar in terms of build quality, but are cheaper. But if you do get this monitor, I don't think you'd be disappointed, and overall it does win the recommended award. If it was a little bit cheaper, it would win the top performer, so I know these things do fluctuate, so do bear that in mind. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. A massive thank you to ViewSonic for getting this review sample out as always. Thanks to Corsair for sponsoring the channel. Subscribe for more monitor reviews if you haven't already. There are plenty of monitor reviews that you can find out about here. Thanks again, I'll see you in the next video.